All right, I was halfway through another video I had been planning for a couple of days when someone forwarded me this article that was published by VG247 earlier today. The article titled Game Developers It's Time to Stop Listening to the Fans is worth analyzing because despite being pretty obvious rage bait here, it establishes a fairly interesting set of questions such as what effect does video game feedback end up having, why is the games industry unlike other areas so specifically focused on fan feedback, and why is that feedback increasingly vocal in recent months and years. I'll spare everyone the excruciating process of just reading the entire article outright, but a good starting point reads as follows. Bioware has a lot to answer for, basically. Mass Effect 3 feels like ground zero for toxic fan entitlement. I'm sure the developer was just trying to do the right thing, but it changed the ending of its game due to negative feedback, bending its creative vision to pander to the baying masses. This rarely happens in any other medium. Sure, you could point at the Sonic movie changing his appearance over criticism, but it's the video game crowd once again. Elsewhere, people have petitioned to have the last season of Game of Thrones remade, but HBO would never do that because it's absurd. Right off the bat, it all goes pear-shaped. The analysis that changing creative material based on viewer or fan feedback is odd in other industries is sort of correct, I guess. By and large, movies are not changed post-release, nor do TV shows go back and alter endings. But there is a very simple explanation for this. Movies, TV shows, and almost all digital entertainment in general is a fully packaged development process with a start and ending date pre-established. One of the obvious and largest reasons why movies don't go back and change endings based on fan feedback is because the movie is already complete. In order to do so, they would need to reassemble the sets, rehire the actors, and pull together a giant team of individuals that have fully disbanded and are no longer participating on the project. Video games, however, often have an entire team of dedicated workers persistently working on the product for months, years, or even at this point with the focus on games as a service, possibly decades into the future. The second reason why video games update more consistently based on fan feedback is because it's an interactive medium. You don't directly interface with and control a TV show. A viewer experience is, again, isolated to just personal preference and opinion, but video games are not just that, they have the added element of functionality where game mechanics directly impact player enjoyment and can be changed. The example of Mass Effect 3 is actually a very good example to help prove this author's point. Well done, good for you. It is modification of creative vision based on fan feedback that does not revolve around actual game balancing which could subsequently affect player interactions or enjoyment in a more significant way. Effectively, the modification of Mass Effect 3's ending story is an outlier that can be used to show the process of fan feedback influencing developers' artistic vision, but it is his only relevant example. Later in the article, he makes the following statement. Look at any online game community and there's always someone complaining about how their character isn't strong enough or how the character who can counter their hero is too strong. There will be dozens of posts about how their favorite weapon doesn't do enough damage or how another weapon is OP. There will also be another player somewhere typing out the exact opposite. These people aren't professional game developers, and they just want to make their very narrow experience of a game better for them, not for everyone else. Game balancing for an online shooter is far more complex than toggling things for the sake of it. Look at how Fortnite constantly pipes in new weapons and zaps them off because they're too disruptive. You can't just tweak and see what happens, especially if your game is seriously played at a competitive level. How can you filter anything usable that your actual experts haven't already considered from all this noise? Here we can see a giant disconnect. His original claim was that fan feedback modifying creative vision can be a bad thing, which is far more understandable, but the now clearly articulated assertion that feedback around online shooter balancing is in the same category is where it really falls apart. Fan feedback on mechanics that interact in a competitive way is not even close to the same thing as criticism of an artistic narrative. Video games have direct interactions where balance affects enjoyment, or even playability. Game developers utilize player feedback on a massive scale as a tool to help direct them towards problematic areas. If you have a balanced mechanic with adequately proportional counters, the feedback will be relatively even. But when there are large imbalances, developers need the player feedback because in a complex MMORPG, FPS, or MOBA game with thousands, even tens of thousands of combinations, as is true with most PvP-oriented games, they are typically unable to actually test and cover all of these interactions with detail on their own. Let's compare it to any other industry other than cinema, which is a really bad example. In the automobile manufacturing business, cars are iterated upon, often yearly. There are artists that work on these concepts, and they sculpt different design elements or craft the dashboard layout in an aesthetic way. If customer feedback tells them that the cup holder or whatever else is in a terrible spot, it is entirely possible that they will move that cup holder in the next annual installment of the car model. 
This is not because they are compromising their creative vision. This is because there is a practical purpose tied directly to customer enjoyment and convenience, which is not too far removed from the utility that certain mechanics in video games hold, as they are directly connected to player or customer enjoyment and convenience. Returning to the subject of fan feedback adjusting artistic vision, there is an important point to make. Games are just as often adjusted on a creative or narrative level because of journalist and media outrage as they are because of fan backlash or anything similar. This exact argument that developers should not listen to gamers can be tweaked with a single word and turned into developers should not listen to journalist feedback. It's an argument I myself have made, and there is an important reason why. Journalist outrage and media backlash of creative concepts before they have even come out has tangibly impacted game development in the past. And if you compare that directly to user feedback or criticism based on actual game mechanics that are fun, broken, or annoying, you can see one is based in reality with a practical purpose designed to improve the game in a tangible way. The other is an emotional outcry that is meant to modify artistic vision away from what the developer might or might not intend, no one even knows yet, and transform it into something more agreeable before it even exists. At another point in the article, we can see the following. Then there's Mass Effect Andromeda, a game taken down by GIFs, or GIFs, or whatever you want to call them. Development focus was on creating worlds and learning how to use an entirely new engine that isn't well suited to RPG development. As such, the facial animation suffered and people took the piss in GIFs, GIFs, whatever. Back in the day, it was a given that RPGs didn't look as nice as other games because of the scope. Nowadays, everything looks nice because developers want their games to look good in screens rather than communicate what makes the games special. Bioware's next game, Anthem, looked incredible at the expense of everything else. It appeared to be a direct reaction to that negative feedback, those viral gifs or gifs of goofy character expressions. Yet again, this is an entirely different angle. At first, the article pertains to preservation of creative vision, which, again, I can actually get behind in a lot of circumstances. Then, towards the end, it pertains to game mechanical balancing, which is an iterative process largely requiring player feedback. And in the middle, it pertains to aesthetics. Mass Effect Andromeda was ugly. It's not the sole reason it remained unpopular post-release. It had a host of other gameplay issues and multiplayer monetization tactics that players were unhappy with. But even if we treat this claim at face value and assume that yes, it failed because of graphics, that's a completely different core premise that he has just thrown in as if it somehow relates. Imagine if HBO had launched Game of Thrones with terrible special effects. He is right to assume it would not have been changed. It can't be changed because the production for it has well and truly concluded by the time viewers even see it. But viewers would have complained if Daenerys looked like she had to take a shit every time she walked anywhere. Furthermore, fans did complain when a coffee cup showed up smack dab in the middle of a scene. Now, obviously, they are not able to and are not going to even try and reshoot the whole scene now, post-release, after the episode has aired. But if they had an active development project with a persistent Game of Thrones world, like a video game, where they could go in this week or next week or whenever and edit that coffee cup out or improve the visual fidelity so Daenerys doesn't look ridiculous, they could, should, and would do it. Lastly, there is this line. New ideas always get a bit of pushback. It makes me worry whether this environment of fan feedback development is holding back AAA game development from reaching its true potential. This right here screams brutal ignorance. New ideas do not always get a bit of pushback. Just look at a game like Death Stranding. Obviously an attempt at new ideas. Conceptually, you could draw parallels to the upside down world that other shows, movies, and games have used in their own ways, of course. But Death Stranding is anything but a carbon copy of existing material. It is an attempt at narrative and artistic innovation. I don't see pushback to that. I'm sure that some players are probably unenthused and think it looks bad or uninteresting to them personally, but there is not fan pushback because it is new. Quite the inverse, people are looking forward to it because it appears to be fresh and creative. For the question of what effect does fan feedback have on gaming, the answer is multifaceted. If you look at a game like The Division, the original version was falling apart at the seams in terms of balancing, and the developers opened their doors to a team of about 13 people from the community to come in and provide fan feedback from individuals that had extensive experience with the game or represented demographics that they wished to improve the game for, from casual to hardcore, PvE-focused, all the way to PvP-exclusive fans. The result was a content patch that put the game in close to the best state it ever saw. By and large, the community was very, very pleased, and I was literally on that team of people, and thus able to witness the process by which developers internalize fan feedback. It is not a universally detrimental thing. It is by and large extremely necessary and very valuable. 
For the question of why the industry is even focused on fan feedback, look no further than player retention. Many of the major publishers are viewing games as a service or live service products with long lifespans to be the future of the industry. To keep a live service game popular, you need to make sure it stays fun. And customer feedback telling you what is fun or not is a dumbfoundingly obvious part of that equation. And finally, for the question of why general player feedback has become increasingly vocal over time, especially recently, the answer is more and more obvious as release day playability and relative quality for AAA games has been progressively declining. With games having been so brutally structured around per-user spending, a large majority of the backlash, criticism, or feedback takes shape around what we are getting for what price. If games were launching routinely with plenty of content, and that content didn't hard crash your console or computer like Anthem did, players would not be leveling as much criticism at developers or publishers. But when a game launches with scraps of what is expected and largely promised by overly optimistic marketing material, and what little is there happens to also be nearly unplayable due to glitched mechanics and buggy design, that is when players offer vocal feedback demanding an improvement, and they are not wrong to do so. This author believes that the AAA games industry is being held back by toxic player feedback, but I would argue the exact inverse. A total deterioration of game integrity is being staved off by vocal players that are not able to be manipulated into swallowing a pill that will do nothing but harm the hobby that they love. There are, of course, examples of aggressive and unwarranted feedback that is ill-informed and misdirected, but those examples are not indicative of the widespread norm. They are outliers, just like Mass Effect 3 actually modifying story elements is an outlier, and the majority of changes are aimed at mechanical balancing because in the video games industry, the ability to incrementally improve player experience based on direct feedback of those players themselves is wonderfully possible and rightfully utilized. But that's enough for today. If you want to support, check out the links down below. Standard stuff like memberships, merch, and other things as well. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.